Hey guys, I want to give you a little tour of my homeschool room. I've been meaning to do it for a while now, but it's been kind of crazy around here. Uh, but I think I can leave, finally have it where I kind of like it. So I'm gonna flip this over and uh, let me get the little tour started. Okay, here we go. So um, I have, oh, that was called yesterday's date, but I haven't changed it yet, but this is, a little sign for the older children when they are um, when they are learning how to write the date, so it has all the information. And then um, down there, you'll see the boards. So the black board is for practicing lowercase letters. Uh, we use handwriting without tears, and so it has that double line. And also for practicing cursive. And then the larger uh, cork board is for uh, geometry work. Now if we come over here, this is where we have all of our supplies and so we have different types of rulers, protractors, squares, etc. And then uh, you can see that the kids have already been at work here putting the pencils where they don't belong. Um, but uh, we have glues, scissors, which are supposed to be in here. Um, it is not perfect as you can see because it's first week of our learning community and so there are still a lot of rules and guidelines that we're working on but we have our sharpeners erasers um, etc so all sorts of fun stuff uh, for the children to be independent in getting their supplies ready and then down here to have different types of paper so we have lined paper and we have graph paper and then I usually have white paper here and uh, sometimes I switch it up and I put colored paper so that they um, have you know a different alternative to work with um, and then down here this these carts by the way are, are awesome um, I know Ikea sells them I got my uh, the first one I got at the container store but I know Ikea sells them now for a much more affordable price now these are little whiteboards and then this is for children who still need to be reminded about the formation of letters and numbers. It's really helpful. And so I always have it here and I pull it out if I, if I see that they're flipping letters or numbers. And that way I don't have to tell them, you know, you're doing it wrong. I can just say, oh, let's check your four. Does your four look the same as this four? So it's just kind of a control of error where the adult doesn't have to be. Um, telling the child they're doing something wrong. Now up here, so let me back up so that you see the whole shelf, right? So um, I have the first things that I have are math and geometry. So, you know, ideally you would have it in order, but I don't have a lot of space, it's in my home. And so I have it just the way that it fits best. Oh, look at that. <laughs> There's a piece out of, the, um, out of place, but this is the geometry box of sticks. And then over here I have a nice little plant now these are greater than less than <laughs> they're the little alligators for greater than less than um then i have the um uh, the, the the large bead frame now you don't need a small bead frame and a large bead frame you just need a large bead frame and when you're working with younger children you just introduce the units tens hundreds and thousands and then as they get older or you know they sometimes they figure it out on their own and then I have the flat bead frame or golden bead frame for multiplication. And so you can see how there's somewhat of an order, right? First the, um, the large bead frame and then the golden bead frame. Now this, I love thrift stores and this I got at a thrift store. It is one of those old boxes for storing photographs, which, you know, <laughs> none of us use anymore. So what I did was these word problems are from Montessori 1, 2, 3, and they're really great. They are advanced word problems, um, and so they're for children who are, you know, doing operations into the thousands or ten thousands, um, and each one has a little number so that you can check their work so, you know, they don't have to write the entire problem down, and they're really interesting because along with the word problems, they give you a lot of facts so you know your child is doing geography like here they're doing history um, they're doing all sorts of 
fun stuff. Like my son and his friend worked on four of these the other day and you know, they got to choose. And so I said, you could do, you know, addition or subtraction and you can choose any word problems. You know, um, I suggest a minimum of four, but you can do more if you want. And so the fact that they got to choose was really, uh, exciting for them. And you know, they have to read through the problem, figure it out. Some of those problems, oh, let me show you. Some of those problems have um, more information than is needed. And so then the children have to discern what is relevant to solve the problem and what isn't. So that's great. And Montessori 1, 2, 3 also has simpler word problems for younger children. And so if you have like a first grader or second grader, then you can, um, you can also print out the, uh, the, the more affordable ones. And you can either buy them where they mail them to you already printed out, or there's a, an option to print a PDF version. And so it's a lot more affordable and you can print it at home. So again, that's Montessori 1, 2, 3. I'm not affiliated with them, but I really love their word problems. They do a nice job. And so they're, they're color coded as well, right? With the Montessori colors. Um, and they have these nice little images on each problem. So they're very attractive. Okay, so here's multiplication. You see that it even has, they, they have decimals. And so children that are working with decimals. So as you can see, these are for kind of, you know, eight, nine, 10 year olds and up division problems. And then here I have, so these that have a black border are um, uh, mixed, mixed operations. And so you might need to do subtraction and multiplication, for example, to solve these problems. And then they have a control chart. And I have those put away. And I'll, I'll usually, I'll, you know, I'll take them out when the children are ready to check their work. And that way they're not tempted to just, you know, get the right answer, but they're more focused on working through it. Okay, so here I have my fractions. And, you know, I have them on the top because it is a big material. But it's also really attractive. I have a lot of children, well, a lot. I have five new children um, who have never had Montessori experience, and they're between the ages of five and seven, and all of them are so intrigued with the fractions, and so that's the first thing they want to do is pull them out and find out what they are for. So it's been really interesting to watch them. I just show them a sensorial exploration where I say, you know, I wonder which pieces would fit in here. And then I just kind of back away and then I let them explore and then they'll call me over and, you know, be really excited when they've discovered that, you know, four of these pieces fit here. And so I very gently start talking about fractions um, if they are interested. So it's, it's a great way to just get them started exploring when you don't have time to explain, to, to go into the whole presentation or when they don't have the background to really understand what fractions is but you can still let them explore sensorial equivalences. Okay, um, let's go back to math on the next shelf. And so you get a sense of a little bit of order, but you know, not too much. So here is my stamp game. And um, you can, oh, there's one of the pieces is out of place. As you can see, there's a lot of attention to detail that has to go into a prepared environment. So you have to go through at the end of every day when the children have put the materials away and just make sure that they've put everything in the right place. So anyways, the stamp game, um, you can stack boxes like the stamp game. I suggest you label them if your children aren't very familiar or if you're not very familiar with what the materials are. But So that's the stamp game, and that's for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with four-digit numbers. And then followed by that, I have a homemade snake game. And so I just adapt this material, whether I'm doing addition, subtraction, or multiplication snake game, I just adapt it to, um, to what I'm doing. Now, this little container worked really well for my daughter last year when she didn't want to do any math. And so what she had here were some addition slips. And so it says to do. And then down here, done, right? So anytime she, she would take out a slip and then write it down in a booklet and uh, find the answer and then she would put the done here. And so it's a visual of how much she's done. And there was a third drawer that right now we're using for something else, but the third drawer had a little booklet. And since she was the only one using it, um, then she would keep her booklet in here. Now that I have more children, 
they each have their own folder and so that's where they're keeping their booklets now back there's the multiplication flashcards which you know we use once in a while but they're not the main way that we learn um and then here we have the addition finger chart um multiplication finger chart and you can see it's their their paper this one is not laminated this one is um and then we have the what's called the half chart um and it's it's um, multiplication it's yellow um, these I just had randomly. Oh, look, here are the controls. I knew I had them somewhere. There we, there we go. <laughs> here are the controls for the uh, word problems, right? And so you can see that it's, it's easy for the children to check, but, you know, you also don't want them to be, you know, always having them handy because then they'll just be fixated on the answer and not necessarily be working through the problem. So um, you kind of want to have them just in there. Okay, let's move on. So over here, under these fractions, I have the fraction pieces, right? The cutout fractions. Now I got the two boxes because I have an older child. So I have an upper elementary child, well two now. Um, and so the larger box has the holes through the tenths. And then the smaller box has the smaller fractions. You can see the twelfths, fourteenths, etc all the way to 24ths. Obviously it skips like the 17th and things that are not multiples of anything else. And then here, the centesimal circle. And then here is the, what's called the Montessori protractor. And so they're all together because for these, you use these fractions or you use these fractions. So do you see how there's a little bit of logic to that? Okay, so now in the same vein as fractions, we have the decimal material and this is a DIY that I made last year and I used pony beads. I printed these. I honestly, I don't remember where I got it from. Um, I think teachers pay teachers. Now this is the paper one and I like this one for when you introduce the cards because it's the same size as the cards and so the cards go really well right on top of the yellow rectangles and the children can line up the cards to understand the different values. But when they start working with larger numbers, I like using, let me roll this up so you can see it. Oh, it's upside down. I like using this one that I made on my own and it did take a little bit of work, but I think it's worth it. So it's a lot larger so the children can make larger amounts and, and really explore it. Um, I see the question, where did you purchase the smaller fraction pieces? Um, at uh, Allison's, Allison's Montessori. I think that's where I got most of my, my materials. Let me see, it might have, no, oh, it doesn't say on the box. Oh, it does, there you go. Allison's Montessori. Um, and they have a premium line and a budget line. So, you know, it really just depends on, on your budget. Um, let me see, over here, I have my little gray numbers for the checkerboard and for doing distributive multiplication. Um, hopefully it'll, it'll last. I have my symbols and I have the white numbers for the checkerboard. And then I also have dice, different types of dice, um, which is great for encouraging the children to come up with their own large problems. And they, they have fun with that. And here I just have a little bit of, these are also for Montessori one, two, three, and they are just uh, coin work. Um, so just different, very different ways of combining coins and, to, and checking the values. And my daughter really likes those. She's six and she really likes those. So we have them there. Um, and then let's go back over here. Okay, so this is the um, square root board. And this is also from Allison's Montessori, I think. I don't know, I might be wrong. It might be Montessori outlet. But anyway, there are two different materials that you can use for multiples, square roots, squaring. Um, and you can use the pegboard and the pegs, but they're about $100 and it's a huge material. So if you're homeschooling or if you have a tiny little classroom, then the square root board, which is what I'm holding here, is so much more space efficient. It's much more affordable. And unless your child really has a lot of issues with beads, this is 
really quite sufficient for doing all of the same work that you would do with a pegboard. So multiples, uh, factors, uh, squaring, square roots, all of that you can do with this. Now over here I have the checkerboard, right? And so, you know, again, there's kind of that relationship of, of the materials. Then I'm gonna back up a little bit so you can see how this is going. Okay, so there, there's the second row. And I got this shelf at Ikea, by the way. I like it because it um, it has a lot kind of narrower, it has like a narrower band in the middle as opposed to the big, large uh, cubbies that, that Ikea usually has. And so you can fit some of the smaller materials, like for example, the trinomial cube. And you don't need a binomial and a trinomial because there's the binomial inside the trinomial. So you only need one. This is, let me turn it, there we go. So this is for the liter, right? So this is a cube that measures one liter. And then inside I have little cubes that I use to just explain the concept of a liter. Now it's not a thousand cubes, um, so it's not gonna fill up the entire cube, but it, it uh, kind of gives the children that impression. And we also use those little cubes for other materials like volume and, um, and working with other bases that are not base 10. And now we come over here to the golden beads. Now, if you know anything about Montessori, you know that golden beads are kind of the first math material that children are, are really exposed to after the, you know, the primary number rods and, and uh, spindles and all that. So this is like the main material, but I have it around this side because it doesn't really fit well over there. So I have the, the two materials here. And if I back up over here, we're gonna go to our last row of math materials. And I have the addition strip board. And the reason I have it is because, again, I have a lot of young children this year. Well, not a lot. I have five young children this year who um, don't have a Montessori background. And so they're really struggling with some of the foundational concepts and they need to have those visual manipulative hands-on materials, right? So this is the strip board. It's an old material, but it's great. Now over here, I have my colored beads, the, the decanomial bead box. And I love how it fits perfectly in that cubby. It's like it was meant to be. And then the other one that's meant to be is the geometry uh, cabinet. Okay, so now let me show you what else I have on top of the geometry cabinet. So I have the geometry solids, right? So that makes sense because they're there. Uh, they're, they're like in the same uh, topic, general topic. I have the yellow material for area, which I, um, it's a, it's a printable, um, and it's one of the printables that I suggest in the timeline. And then these, again, I got these at Allison's, and this is the premium line. It's really beautiful. It is expensive. You don't need it unless you are, you know, really have several children or are really, you know, sold on homeschooling long term. But it is a beautiful material. Now, Montessori ETC, which is not a very like homeschool friendly uh, company, but they do have some that are kind of a plastic option. And so those are great if you only have one or two elementary children and you don't want to invest in this whole thing. So here is the control chart. And then over here, I have these um, self healing boards, which are great for compass work. They're awesome. And then the golden beads. Okay, so that is what I have for math. So let me back up again. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay, so this is the math area, if you will, the math shelf. And now it kind of segues into language. So let me give you a quick tour of what we have for language. Okay, so Story Path is an amazing book that I discovered a few years ago at a book fair at our school and it's actually out of print so here's the author um and let me show you the publisher so it's a british publisher it's out of print but you can still find it on the interwebs so what story path does is it um it guides children through 
forming a story by giving them certain choices. So it, it, uh, it gives them prompts and then it helps them to, to choose. So for example, it starts once upon a time, there lived A, and then it gives them five different characters. And then the child chooses the characters. Um, and then they choose the, the setting and the problem and the, you know, the secondary characters. And so it helps children understand the structure of a story arc. And it's really awesome. Okay, so I see a question. How many students do I have in our community? Well, we currently have nine, including my two children, and they're ages five through nine. And um, I am getting, a, maybe I'm getting two more. So that's going to be uh, an interesting um, um, challenge uh, to add two more because I, I do have a small space, um, but at the same time, it's going brilliantly. And so I want to be able to share it with other families that are kind of you know, really invested in Montessori and in giving a good experience to their children. So let me keep going with the language. Um, so these are for practicing numbers and capital letters. Um, and when you work with handwriting without tears, which is really brilliant and very complimentary approach um, that works really well with Montessori, you use little chalkboards to practice the letters because the chalkboards provide a frame of reference, especially for children who are flipping numbers and flipping letters. I um, mean, if you go back into my um, IGTV, you will find a video on how to use these little chalkboards to introduce capital letters. Um, and then we have these I got at Target. They're not really great, but we use them once in a while. So they have um, kind of the... Um, the phonographs, but just, you know, lists of words. And so once in a while, we, we use these the little eraser so they can erase. And then the chalkboard is, I mean, the, the, the chalk is uh, with the other chalkboard. And so they just have to go get it. Um, okay. So then here, this is kind of not in the best of places, but again, I don't have a lot of space. These are watercolor pencils and they're awesome. Um, and so what I've started doing with some of the children is doing um, color mixing. And so just exploring how we can use these three watercolor pencils and, you know, and then make other secondary colors and even tertiary colors. Um, and so I just have these little color wheel type printables out and the children and I show them how to. Okay, I'm running out of battery, so I'm going to have to do a part two, but um, I usually have this with water, and then I show them how to, um, you know, how to pour in the water, how to use the paint brushes and the pencils, and we go through making the color wheel so the children can experience the combinations. I'm going to finish the top of the shelf and then go charge this, and then I will finish up in a little while. So this is the little basket um the teacher's basket oh you just purchased story path that's awesome it's such a great book you're gonna love it um and you know the best part about story path coming back to this is that uh you can use it with pre-literate children and all the way up to children who are writing you know chapter books um it's very versatile you are going to love it all of my students loved it um so anyways this is the little strips um, for doing sentence analysis and for writing labels for the children. These are the little number strips. I love this little box. It was one of those Chinese New Year um, little desserts that, that they have. Um, and now it is my number thing. Another little plant. And you can notice that the leaves are totally different shape, right? So these are linear uh, venation, right? The veins all, all run in the same line. And then if you go over back here, then here you have... Um, a different type of vein venation, right? Where you have the primary vein and then you have the secondary veins. And so then when you're talking about um, plant veins or plant leaves, you want to have a variety of, of examples. Now, these are um, timers, sand timers, um, and the children love them. And so they're, they're great for obviously exploring time, um, but also if you have a child who, you know, doesn't want to write, for example, doesn't want to do copy work or whatever it is, you say, okay, let's set a timer. All you have to do is five minutes and let's see how much careful focused work you can do in five minutes. Um, some of the little children that I'm working with, um, when I showed them these, they were so excited and they said, oh, I'm going to see how, how long it takes me to draw something. And then they would come back and say, look, the timer's still running. Um, I can do more drawing. And so it just gives them a sense, a concrete sense of time when time is such an abstract concept. 
Um, and then we have our tiny little science area right now, um, which is just the protective eyewear. And these are all of the slides and, and uh, supplies for the microscope, a little book about the microscope, and then we have our microscope back here. And there's a reason why I have it kind of hidden, and it's because, I, again, I have a lot of little ones. Um, and until I show them how to use the microscope carefully, I don't want it to be like really visible and apparent, but I want to have it on the shelf so that they get used to it. Okay, so that is the top of my shelf. Now I am going to go charge my phone before it dies, and I'll be back in a little while, hopefully, if my kids don't uh, show up and start running all around the house. I will be back in a little while to give you a tour of the rest of the shelves. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments. I look forward to hearing about it. Take care, bye.